Singapore scientists are hoping to start clinical trials that could find the answer to slowing the muscle and strength loss as we age. Now, the team from Duke NUS has discovered a protein called interleukin-11 or IL-11 that causes aging. Blocking this protein could potentially increase healthy lifespans. Now, for more on this, I'm now joined by Assistant Professor Anissa Wijaya from the Cardiovascular and Metabolic Disorders Program at Duke NUS Medical School. Professor, welcome to the studio. Thank so you. the big question is, is IL-11 the key to immortality? Well, I don't really get the idea of immortality. Personally, I don't believe in immortality. Okay. Um, I think we are all human. <laughs> we are all um, mortal and we are all aging. And aging is driven by a small set of switches that gets more and more active as we get older. Mm -hmm. And I-11 is one of these switches. So this protein, IL-11, it's not new to science apparently, but how did you and your team discover its role as the key driver of aging? It's uh, really pure luck, pure serendipity. Back in 2017, we received these samples from our collaborator. It's meant for another study. And at that time, I was already working uh, with interleukin-11 and its role in the heart. So I thought to myself, why not just see whether... Um, I could see this I-11 in the samples because it happened that these samples come from different age group. Mm. And lo and behold, um, we found that I-11s are elevated with increasing age. Yeah. How, how do you feel upon that discovery in 2017? It was, uh, we were very confused actually in the beginning because we went back to literature mm. and we couldn't see any uh, possible role of I-11 in aging. Mm. And, and then we looked. Again, we read a lot and we saw that, okay, what happened in aging? What happened in aging is you have more tissue scarring, you have more inflammation, and you have a decline in your body ability to heal, to repair and regenerate uh, after injury. Yeah. And then we look at I-11, what I-11 does. I-11 causes tissue scarring, I-11 mm. causes inflammation, and I-11 causes a decline in our body ability to repair and regenerate. So all these matches. Okay. Plus the fact that we see that I-11 uh, are elevated with aging. We thought, okay, this is so interesting and mm. perhaps I-11 could be a key driver in aging process. And your team also found that our organs produce increasing levels of IL-11 and that reduces muscle mass and strength um, as well as increase fat accumulations in the liver and mm -hmm. abdomen. How are these symptoms related to aging? Yeah, so with, with aging, all our cells in the body, they accumulate damage factors. Mm. Damage protein, damage DNA, damage mitochondria. And with this damage factor, accumulation of these damage factors, this makes your fat tissue um, have less ability to burn calories. Mm. This makes your muscle um, less strong, less strong, and then this makes your fat tissue also has less ability to remove the fat efficiently. So, Professor, you know, explain to us more about the anti-IL-11 therapy, how it works in countering aging. We all want to know this. Okay. <laughs> so anti-IL-11 therapies are an antibody drug. Um, we administer it um, in our mouse model via injection. And it acts by binding specifically to IL-11 and blocking it from its action. And in aging, this turn off the switches that I mentioned just now. And because aging is only controlled by a small set of switches, if you turn off one or two of these off, this will cause all our cells to regain their youthful function so they can function better. So yeah. anybody can take this therapy? Uh, they are not um, in, uh, in the market yet. Okay. They are in clinical trials, but mm. not for aging. They are for fibrotic lung disease, for cancer immunotherapy, and for eye disease. Okay, so how far would lifestyle changes though, like healthy diets, um, exercises go in reducing these aging symptoms or is change at the molecular level the most effective at slowing down the process? Okay, so yes, <laughs> like exercise strength training, yeah, go for it. I think uh, everyone should uh, exercise regularly. Mm. Calorie restriction, healthy diet, you probably have to start when you are like about what 35 40 year old because that's when you earlier yes yeah <laughs> when you realize that your body has slower metabolism mm -hmm. but you have to be very compliant you have to be very disciplined um if not it's very difficult to see uh, on 
obvious effects. I mean, personally, I feel it's very miserable, but with NT11, we see improvements uh, mm. in all the features of aging that we mm. observe in mice. I would uh, emphasize that it is, this is in mice, but given one and one-to-one -one relationship between the effects of I-11 in human and mouse cells that we have seen so far in our study, others have shown it uh, as well, uh, very independent of us, both in academic institution mm. and pharmaceutical company. So we think um, the likelihood that anti-11 therapy will work in human is there. Okay. Yeah. So earlier you talked about um, this clinical trial. Yeah. You and your team are raising funds for it. So share with us more about your plans and what do you hope to achieve from that trial? Um, we are uh, talking to partners, uh, trying to speak to individuals and maybe um, pharmaceutical companies who are already in aging field, especially those with um, substantial funding support maybe, and try to find a way that um, maybe with our data to encourage and inspire them if they could think um, to pursue this important direction. And what we would like to achieve is that this is my hope that we can do trial for aging within the country in Singapore. Mm, that's very interesting. Professor Wijaya, thank you very much for coming in You're into welcome. the studio to thank talk to us about me. this. Uh, that was Assistant Professor Anissa Wijaya from the Cardiovascular and Metabolic Disorders Program at Duke NUS Medical School.